For any project, you want to retain the ability to experiment for as long as possible, so it's important to make sure that anything we add is easy to update. One way to achieve this, of course, is to make models parametric. And for example, tucked away in the trees in the lake scene that we used to promote Forest Pack 6 created by Poly Machine is a power line that can be created using RailClone. RailClone also instances geometry automatically, and so even though the object ended up barely visible in the final render, you'll still have a high quality asset that's easy to edit and suitable for close-ups in future projects. Let's take a look at how it was made. The power line itself consists of two geometry objects, a pylon and a cable. The pivots for these have been edited so that when their axes are aligned, the cable meets the pylon in the correct place. So to create a rail clone object for this, first go to the create panel to the i2 software section and add a rail clone object. Go to modify and open the style editor. Add a new linear generator and then a new spline. Pick a spline from the scene and wire it to the generator's spline input. Then add a new segment node in order to import the geometry, the pylon in this case, and wire it to the start to add a pylon at the very beginning of the spline and then another one at the end of the spline by wiring it to the end input. You can also add it to the corner input so that it'll add a pylon anywhere we add a vertex to the spline. Next we'll add the cables, so add a new segment node, pick the cable from the scene, and then wire this node to the default input to fill in in between. You'll notice that the cables sit on the ground on top of the spline and this is because the position is governed by the bounding box of the segment itself. What we need to do is to change this so that it uses the pivot we assigned earlier. So to do this go to the properties for the segment, go to the alignment section and change Z to pivot. And to make sure things align perfectly do the same thing for the pylon as well. Of course, this is dependent on you having organized your pivots in advance. We can also wire this now to the evenly input to create regularly spaced intervals and use the distance setting to determine that spacing. At the moment, in order to change this distance, you'd have to open the style editor. But for day-to-day -day use, it would be easier if we could edit this directly from the modify panel. To do this, you right click on the generator and choose the settings you wish to export, in this case the evenly distance, and then click OK. Wire this to a new numeric node, give it a name that's easy to understand from the modify panel, in this case spacing, and change the type of units you want to use. You can now change the spacing of the pylons directly from the modify panel in the parameters rollout. Finally, we can see that the power cables are being sliced where they hit a pylon. In order to fix this, we need to change the default mode so that it scales exactly one cable between each of the pylons. If we change the mode to mesh so we can see the model in more detail, you can see there's still an issue. The cables aren't actually connecting with the pylons correctly. And that's because, again, we're using the bounding box to determine the spacing. And the bounding box of this object is determined by the much wider base. So in order to fix that, we need to change the padding values to a negative so that it pulls the cables close to the pylon and gets them to connect correctly. So we'll do this by selecting the cables themselves, then going to the properties to the general rollout and change the padding value reducing it until the cables pull in correctly and meet where you want them to. You can just do this visually just by editing these values until you're happy with the results. And you have a style that's easy to adjust, so you can adjust the length by changing the spline. And of course we can pick the object itself and change the spacing of the pylons from directly inside the modify panel. But of course, so far this is just flat. What if we want to apply it to an undulating terrain? Well, in order to do that, first of all, we have a simple spline that runs across our terrain, modelled flat also. And we want to project this downwards onto the terrain itself. So to do that, it's very easy. Just add a surface node and pick the surface from the scene. Wire it to the generator's surface input and it pushes that spline down internally. This is what's happening. It's projecting that spline down onto the surface. But you can see there's also a small issue here. 
um, the pylons are rotating to follow the surface normal. And really we want them to remain upright. So in order to fix this, we'll go to the pylon segment, go to the deform tab and turn off bend, turn off slice, we don't want to cut the pylons, and change the mode to stepped so that they remain upright. So that fixes those. And then for the cables, we also want to make some changes. We want to change the mode to vertical so that they'll continue to connect correctly to the pylons. And although it doesn't look like they're connecting correctly in this points cloud view, if you render the image, everything is as it should be. We hope this helps to explain how you can quickly and easily create linear arrays that are easy to edit and easy to update using RailClone.